Chapter 8. Everyone Dead in Nagasaki. I was overjoyed. I had found a part of me that I thought I had lost forever. Now, Kensuke beamed at me, now you are a happy person, Mikkelsen. I happy too. We go fishing. I tell you, very soon where I find this ball. Very soon I tell you everything. Little fish, not so good now. Not so many. We need big fish, sometimes from deep sea. We smoke fish. Then we always plenty fish to eat, you understand. The outrigger was a great deal heavier than it looked. I helped Kensuke drag it down the beach and into the sea. This very good bolt, he said, as we lifted Stella in. This bolt never go down. I make myself very safe bolt. He pushed us off and jumped in. I never ceased to be amazed at his extraordinary agility and strength. He rowed with a single oar standing in the stern of the boat, more as if he was punting. Very soon <clears throat> we were out beyond the shelter of the cove and into the swell of the open sea. Clutching my beloved football and with Stella at my feet, I began watching him and waiting for him to begin his story. I knew better than to pester him by now. The fishing came first. We baited our lines and settled silently to our fishing, one over each side of the boat. I was bursting to ask him about the football, about how he'd found it, but I dared not. For fear he would clam up and say nothing. It was some time before he began, but when he did, it was well worth waiting for. Now I tell you everything, Mikkelsen he said. Like I promise, I am old, but it is not long story. I am born in Japan, in Nagasaki, very big town, by the sea. I grow up in this town. When I young man, I study medicine in Tokyo. Soon I am doctor, Dr. Kensuke Ogawa. I very proud person. I look after many mothers, many babies too. I first person many babies see in world. Then I go to London. I do studies in London. Guy's Hospital. You'll know this place. I shook my head. Of course, I learned to speak little English there. Afterwards, I came back to Nagasaki. I have beautiful wife, Kimi. Then I have little son too, Mikia. I very happy person in those days. But soon war comes. All Japanese men are soldiers now, sailors may be. I go to Navy. I doctor on big warship. The fish tugged on his line and took his bait, but not the hook. He went on as he rebaited his hook. This war, very long time ago now. I did know something of the war with Japan. I'd seen it on films, but I knew very little about it. He shook his head. Many die in this war. This war, very terrible time. Many ships go down. Japanese army win many battles. Japanese navy win many battles. All Japanese very happy people like football. When you win, you're happy. When you lose, you're sad. I go home often to see my Kimi and my little Mikia in Nagasaki. He grow fast, already big boy. We all very happy family. But war go on long time. Many Americans come, many ships, many planes, many bombs. Now war is not so good for Japan. We fight, but we now lose. Very bad time. We are in big sea battle. American planes come. My ship is bombed. There is fire and smoke, black smoke. Many men burned, many men dead. Many jump off ship into sea, but I stay. I am doctor. I stay with my patients. Planes come again, many more bombs. I think I am dead person this time for sure, but I am not. I look all round ship, all patients dead, all sailors dead. I am only person alive on ship, but engine is still going, ship moving on her own. She go now where she want to go. I cannot turn wheel. I can do nothing, but I listen to radio. Americans say on radio, Big bomb fought on Nagasaki, atomic bomb, many dead. I very sad person, I think Kimi dead, Mikia did. My mother there, oh too, 
All my family, I think they are dead. Soon radio say Japan surrender. I so sad I want to die. He finished in sentence for a while before he began again. Soon engine stop but ship not go down. Big wind come, big storm, I think I die for sure now. But sea take ship and bring me here on this island. Ship come onto beach and still I am not dead. Very soon I find food, I find water also. I live like beggar man for a long time. Inside I feel bad person. I think all my friends dead, all my family dead and I alive. I not want to live. But soon I meet orangutans. They're very kind to me. This very beautiful, very peaceful place. No war here, no bad people. I say to myself, Kensuke, you're a very lucky person to be alive. Maybe you stay here. I take many things from ship. I take food, I take clothes, sheets, I take pots, I take bottles, I take knife, I take binoculars, I take medicine. I find many things, many tools also. I take everything I find. When Kensuke finish, not much left on ship, I tell you. I find cave, I hide all things in cave. Soon terrible storm come and ship go on rocks. Very soon she go down. One day American soldiers come, I hide. I not want to surrender, not honorable thing to do. I very afraid too, I hide in forest with orangutans. Americans make fire on beach, they laugh in the night. I listen, I hear them. They say everyone dead in Nagasaki. They very happy about this. They laugh. I very sure now I stay on this island. Why go home? Soon Americans, they go away. My ship underwater by now. They not find it. My ship still here, under sand now, part of island now. The rusting hull I had found that first day on the island. So much was beginning to make sense to me now. A fish took my line suddenly, almost jerking my rod from my gask. Kensuke leaned across to help me. It took many minutes of heaving to bring the fish to the surface, but between us we managed to haul it in. We sat back exhausted as it floundered at the bottom of the boat at our feet. It was massive, bigger even than the biggest fish I'd ever seen, the pike my father had caught in the reservoir back home. Kensuke dispatched it quickly, a sharp blow to the back of the neck with the handle of his knife. Good fish, very good fish. You very clever fisherman, person Mika. We go together. Maybe we catch more now. It was many hours before we caught another, although it did not seem like it. Kensuke told me of his life alone on the island and how he had learned to survive, to live off the island. He learned, he said, mostly by watching what the orangutans ate and, and what they did not eat. He learned to climb as they did. He learned to understand their language, to heed their warning signals, the darting eyes, the nervous scratching, and slowly he built a bond of trust and became one of them. By the time we had made for home that evening, we, with three huge fish in the bottom of the boat, tuna, I think they were, his story was almost finished. We, he talked on as he rode. After Americans, no more men come to my island. I alone here many years. I not forget Kimmy, I not forget Mickey, but I live. Then year ago, maybe they come. Very bad people, killer men. They have guns, they hunt, they shoot. I sing to my orangutans. They come with to me when I sing. They are very frightened. They all come in my cave. We hide. Killer men not find us. But in forest they shoot. You told me name. A gibbon monkeys. They shoot mothers. They take babies. Why must they do this? I'm very angry. I think all people kill people. I hate all people. I think I no one see people again. Then one day, I need big fish to smoke. I go fishing in this boat. Wind blow wrong way. I go far out. Sea pull me away very strong. I try come back to my island. It is no good. I am old. Arms are not strong. When night come, I am still far away. I'm very frightened. I sing. I, I make me brave. I hear shout. I see light. I think I dream. And then I hear another song in sea, in dark. I come quick as I can. I find you and Stella and Bo. You very nearly dead person, Mickerson. Stella very nearly dead dog. So, so it had been Kensuke who had pulled me from the sea. Kensuke who had saved me. It simply never occurred to me. In morning, he went on, see, bring us again near my island. 
I'm very glad you're not dead, but a very angry person too. I want to be alone. I not want to see people. For me, all people kill a people. I not want you on my island. I carry you. I leave you on beach. I leave you food. I leave you water so you not die. But you make fire. I want people stay away. I not want people find me here on my island. Maybe they come. Maybe they shoot orangutan. Shoot gibbon monkey. Maybe they find me, take me away too. A very angry person. I put out fire. I not want to speak to you. I not want to see you. I draw a line in sand. Big storm come. Biggest I ever seen. After storm, sea full of white jellyfish. I know these jellyfish very bad. They touch you, you very dead. I know this. I say, do not swim. Very dangerous. Very soon I see you make big fire on top of hill. I think you're a very wicked person. I'm very angry now. And you're very angry too. You swim in sea. Jellyfish sting. I think for sure you dead person. But you're very strong. You live. I bring you into cave. I have vinegar. I make from berries. Vinegar kill poison. You live, Mika. But for a long time, you very sick boy. You're strong again. We friends now. We're very good friends. So that was it, the whole story. He stopped rowing for a while and smiled at me, down at me. You are like sun to me now. We happy people. We paint, we fish, we happy. We stay together. You're my family now, Mickerson. Yes, yes, I said, and I meant it too. He let me take the oar and showed me how to row his way, standing up, feet planted well apart. It wasn't as easy as he made it look. Clearly he trusted me to get us back, for he sat back in the bow of the outrigger to rest and fell asleep almost at once. His mouth open, his face sunken. He always looked even older when he slept. As I watched him, I tried to picture his face as it must have been when he first came to the island all those years ago. Over forty years. I owed him so very much. He had saved my life twice, fed me befriended me. He was right. We were happy, and I was his family. But I had another family too, and I thought of the last time I had been out in a boat with my mother and my father, and how they must be grieving for me every day, every night. But now they must surely believe I was drowned, that there was no chance I could be alive. But I wasn't drowned, I was alive, and somehow I had to let them know it. As I struggled to bring the outrigger back to the island that afternoon, I was filled with a sudden powerful longing to see them again, to be with them. I could steal the boat, I thought. I could row away. I could light a fire again. But I knew, even as I thought it, that I could not do it. How could I ever leave Kensuke now after all he had done for me? How could I betray his trust? I tried to put the whole idea out of my mind, and I really believe I would have too, but... The very next morning I found the plastic coke bottle washed up on the beach and after that the idea of escape came back and haunted me day and night and would not leave me be. For some days I kept the coke bottle buried under the sand whilst I wrestled with my conscience or rather justified what I wanted to do. It wouldn't really be a betrayal, not as such, I told myself. Even if the bottle was found, no one would know where to come to. They'd just know I was alive. I made up my mind. I would do it. And do it as soon as I could.